the director of the WHO, Director General Dr Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, is making an announcement about a malaria vaccine. Let's listen in. Malaria. Almost exactly two years ago, WHO recommended the broad youth of the world's first malaria vaccine called RTSSS. Today, it gives me great pleasure to announce that WHO is recommending a second vaccine called R21 Metrix M to prevent malaria in children at risk of the disease. This recommendation is based on advice from two expert groups, the Strategic Advisory Group of Experts on Immunization and the Malaria Policy Advisory Group. Both groups reviewed evidence from, the tri from trials of the R21 vaccine, which showed that in areas with seasonal transmission, it reduced symptomatic cases of malaria by 75% in the 12 months following a three-dose series of the vaccine. A fourth dose given a year after the third was shown to maintain protection. This efficacy is similar to the RTSSS vaccine when given seasonally. The trial showed the vaccine to be safe and safety monitoring will continue as the vaccine is rolled out. At a cost of between two and four US dollars a dose, it's comparable with other recommended malaria interventions and other childhood vaccines. As a malaria researcher, I used to dream of the day when we would have a safe and effective vaccine against malaria. Now we have two. Since 2000, malaria deaths have fallen by more than half, and we have succeeded in eliminating malaria from many parts of the world. But globally, progress has stalled. Nearly half the world's population remains at risk of malaria. In 2021, there were an estimated 247 million cases of malaria and 619,000 deaths. 95% of cases and deaths are in Africa, and most deaths are in children under five. Demand for the RTSS vaccine for far exceeds supply. So the R21 vaccine is a vital additional tool to protect more children faster and to bring us closer to our vision of a malaria-free world. WHO is now reviewing the vaccine for pre-qualification, which is WHO stamp of approval, and will enable Gavi and UNICEF to buy the vaccine from the manufacturers. At least 28 countries in Africa plan to introduce a WHO-recommended malaria vaccine as part of their national immunization programs. The RTSS vaccine will be rolled out in some African countries early next year, and the R21 vaccine is expected to become available to countries by the middle of next year. R21 was not the only vaccine that SAGE reviewed at its meeting last week. It also recommended a new vaccine against dengue called Q-Denga for children aged 6 to 16 years living in areas where dengue is a significant public health problem. SAGE also recommended a new vaccine against meningitis, the called MN5CV or the pentavalent, which has been shown to protect against five subgroups of the bacteria that cause the disease. And it recommended that for most COVID vaccines, a single dose is sufficient for primary immunization given most people have had at least one prior infection. In addition, SAGE issued advice on the use of vaccines to prevent antimicrobial resistance, as well as for polio, cholera, mumps, and smallpox. To say more, I'm delighted to welcome the chair of SAGE, Dr. Hannah Noyenk, the chief physician at the Department of Health Security at the Finnish Institute for Health and Welfare. Hannah, thank you for your leadership at this exciting time for vaccines and the fight against malaria. And in your own language, kitos, and over to you. Thank you, uh, uh, DG Tedros. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy to be here today 
Uh, we that was the Director have, General um, of the WHO confirming that a second vaccine for malaria has now been approved for children. Our medical editor, Fergus Walsh, is with me to take us through all of that. Fergus, welcome to you. Um, so this is huge news, very significant for the many, many millions of people who are impact by, impacted by malaria. Take us through what uh, he had to say. So what's significant here is, as he said, we now have two malaria vaccines, both of which have taken around 30 years to develop. Um, the one we have now, R21, was developed by the Jenner Institute in Oxford, the same institute that gave us the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID vaccine. They did all that in the space of uh, 10 months, but this one has taken decades to come to fruition. And it's been based now on a major trial in four African countries involving nearly 5,000 children. And the key figure is that it's around 75% effective at preventing malaria. Now, the scale of malaria, it's been killing people, mostly children, um, for millennia. 95% um, of cases and deaths are in Africa, and most of those in children under five. So this is a vaccine for young children who will be given four doses. So it's quite labour intensive to give those, but it will prevent those children either getting malaria or getting severely ill. And I've been in hospitals in Africa where there have been sick children. I was in Ghana 15 years ago where the second, well, in fact, the first malaria vaccine, uh, RTSS, um, was being trialled. Um, and to see the burden of disease on families there is extraordinary. So this is an important moment um, in the fight against one of these most dreaded diseases. Yeah, I think you said 247 million cases of malaria a year, 619,000 deaths, most of those, as you said, children. Take us through the cost of this and when it will be out there and ready to use. Well, the really exciting thing about, or one of the exciting things about the Oxford vaccine is just as they did with the COVID jab, they've signed up with the Serum Institute in India, which is the world's biggest manufacturer of vaccines, to produce 100 million doses of this jab per year. That's many more than are produced of the first vaccine. And they believe that that can be rolled out from next year. And so it's one thing having an effective vaccine. It's another thing to actually use it. So I, I would expect ultimately, and certainly the Oxford team, will hope that they can get this jab in arms very quickly and very dramatically have an impact on cases and deaths. Yeah, because obviously the deaths hugely significant um, on the healthcare systems uh, very often that don't have the support necessary for those people who have it. How easily will they be able to get, as you said, four jabs needed of this one? How easily will they be able to administer these? Well, this is one of the problems globally with healthcare, that we don't have enough um, healthcare staff um, in pretty much every country, but in developing countries especially. Um, so it needs to come with support. It needs to come with global support. Um, and although glo globally deaths from malaria fell back a lot since 2000, there was a, a blip um, during COVID. And it will take international cooperation and support from different partners to ensure that both of these jabs get uh, fully utilised. OK, Fergus, thank you very much.